Buying a home will be the largest single financial decision you'll make. The wrong choice can ruin your finances for years, especially if you're 20-something and this is your first home. Join us as we discuss how to know when you're ready to buy your first home and how much house to buy with Letitia Stiles of YoungFinances.com on The Dollar Stretcher Interview. I'm Gary Foreman, the editor of The Dollar Stretcher, and with me today is Letitia Stiles. Now, Letitia is an author and motivational speaker. She's worked as an investment analyst, started a profitable business, and been featured in local and national media. In 2010, she started YoungFinances.com. Today, she focuses on making personal finance simple and fun for college students and recent grads. Letitia, thanks for joining us today. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And uh, I know uh, a lot of young couples, uh, especially in this housing market, are uh, are thinking that now may be the time uh, time to buy their first home. Uh, how do you know when your finances are strong enough to start looking to buy a home? Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of know when you're ready to buy a home, right? Because you you're getting tired of renting, and you're you know starting to research and do the things that you need to, um, you know, just to learn about how to buy a first home and I went through the exact same experience I'm in the process of purchasing my first home now and I knew I was ready and I was ready financially when I had some money saved up and I knew I was ready to make that um, payment that's required um, so you don't have to get hit with the private mortgage insurance so I mean you know you just start doing the research and um, and you kinda go from there now, one thing uh, that I've suggested to, to young couples in the past would uh, be to estimate what their, their monthly nut would be uh, once they own the home and to, uh, uh, to try to see if their budget would handle that uh, on an ongoing basis. In other words, take uh, the difference between what they were spending in rent and what they would spend as an owner and just set that aside as if they had spent the money on owning the home, just kind of test run it. Definitely. And I, I mean, I would say also just to kind of work backwards. So start with what you think you would want your monthly payment to be because, you know, once you get to the bank, you're likely going to be approved for more than what you were expecting because, you know, the bank is going to use your, uh, your gross income and your front end ratio, a uh, front end ratio to determine what your month, what your monthly payment should be. And, you know, that could cause you to be approved for, a mortgage that's much larger than what you're actually willing to take on. So um, I think it's important to keep that in mind when you're looking to purchase a home. Is, is there an easy way for a couple to determine what really is an affordable amount on their budget or their income? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, start with your rent. If you're having a hard time, you know, making your rent payments, then, you know, you should probably look for something cheaper than that. But uh, let's say, you know, you have rent of $1,000 a month and you, know, you feel comfortable going up to 1200 and there's a percentage, a way that you can check your monthly uh, housing payment should be anywhere from 28 to 31 percent of your monthly income. So if you're using your net income, let's say you have um, monthly net income of $4,000, then you, you can assume that your uh, mortgage payment, you would be comfortable with a mortgage payment of about $1,100 a month. Well, that sounds good. I know I've, in the past I've heard uh, some uh, real estate agents uh, suggest couples can handle, uh, or people can handle uh, up to 40%, but frankly I can't make a budget work uh, with, when you do that, unless, unless you, you're in a situation where you don't have to own a car or that kind of thing. Exactly. And if you're making it a point to make savings a priority where you're saving 20 or 30 percent of your income, then you definitely don't want to have a 40 percent uh, mortgage payment. You'd rather keep it around that 28 percent range and, and even lower if you can, especially with today's prices. Now, I know, uh, uh, you know, so many of us, uh, for even our first home, we want to uh, have a home very similar to what our parents so, uh, lived in and what we grew up in. Uh, uh, but what do you think of starter homes or condos, that type of thing? I think a starter home, you know, that's pretty good. A condo, um, anytime you're sharing a wall or if you're not able to make a lot of um, renovations, you know, typically with a condo, it's going to be a little bit harder to sell when you're ready to leave that starter home. So I am always think for, you know, first timers, you know, single family detached is really the way to go. And, you know, be flexible with the area that you're willing to live in. There are a lot of up-and-coming areas where you can find a home similar to maybe what you you know your parents had 
but the area is not as developed and you know as you're living in that home and the area becomes more developed your home value would increase and um, you know that may be a great way to get started in a home that you you know that you would like now what about uh, saving up for a down payment uh, I, I know uh, uh, a lot of banks will finance you at 10 percent but you mentioned the uh, 20 percent to avoid the uh, uh, the insurance. Uh, at first, tell people a little bit about the insurance, and then second, uh, what's the best way to save up a down payment? Yeah, so the private mortgage insurance is something that is added to your monthly payment if you make a down payment of less than 20% of the homes um, of the homes value the, or your purchase price. So if you can come up with 20% of the homes uh, value, then that's that's ideal because the private mortgage insurance is just an extra amount that you have to pay. You don't get that money back. It doesn't go into building equity for your home. Um, so you want to try to avoid it at all costs. Uh, you can, you know, be approved with 10%, um, in some cases 5%, but the less money that you have, the less skin you have in the game, then typically you're going to um, end up with either a higher, uh, a higher uh, interest rate um, and obviously you're going to have an, a higher monthly payment overall. So the idea is to come up with about 20% and if you can, I mean there are e easy ways to budget for, um, you know, to budget for that down payment. You can take the savings that you've already started with, you know, your 10%, your 20%. You can start with uh, saving inside of your Roth IRA and if it's your first home purchase then you can use those funds uh, as part of your down payment as well. Fantastic. Now I know uh, uh, the trends show that uh, a lot of couples uh, are waiting uh, longer to get married. Uh, do you have any special advice for unmarried couples uh, that are looking to buy a home? Yeah, I think um, I understand. That especially cohabitation is you know pretty big these days, where you know couples are moving in together and combining finances and uh, purchasing homes together without. Um, without the marriage and you know since that trend is you know increasing it's important to um, you know to address it so if you're looking to buy a home and I think you kinda know when you know the person is the one that you <laughs> you think you're gonna you know you're eventually going to marry but you definitely wanna protect yourself um, at all costs so you, there's options on splitting, you know, you want to split everything down the middle, right? So split the home purchase, split the down payment amount, and be prepared if in the future you have to split that asset. Um, obviously, I think when you're making a purchase that big, it's probably better to do it underneath um, the law protections of, or the legal protections of a marriage. But if that's not possible, then, you know, just think of ways that you can protect yourself by going in 50-50 with this person. Yeah, I would think in a lot of cases, I mean, that is a case where you really do need to talk to a lawyer to make sure uh, that you're properly protected. Yeah. And, uh, now, uh, you've talked to a lot of young couples. Uh, what's the biggest mistake that you find young people making uh, when they buy their first home? I'm not shopping around, so they're automatically just running to their bank, uh, their local bank, their looking at the interest rates and thinking that that's you know the be all and end all because those are the rates that are posted but take the opportunity go to a credit union you can open an account with a credit union a lot of times they'll have lower rates for their customers go online look for these websites that allow you to compare interest rates and people uh, banks who are actually wanting your uh, your business and they're willing to compete for your business so shop around for the best interest rate you know a rate of four percent versus a rate of five percent can really save you thousands over the life of the loan fantastic now I know you started Young Finances uh, about four years ago uh, would you tell, tell our viewers a little bit about it please yeah so I did I started Young Finances back in 2010 I had graduated from college and I couldn't find a job in finance that was my degree funnily enough because uh, the economy was crashing at the time and so I just decided that I was going to make my own job and I started writing on Young Finances. I started uh, creating videos. Uh, I eventually uh, did get a job in the finance industry. I continued to do my blog because I love doing it. It's really a passion of mine and uh, I just teach simple budgeting, 
uh, easy ways to start investing, and just general tips on achieving success for uh, for millennials and uh, recent college graduates. Well, fantastic, fantastic. Well, Letitia, we, we thank you for joining us and sharing your knowledge uh, with viewers today, and we thank our viewers for joining us. Uh, we'll have links uh, to youngfinances.com and naturally the dollarstructure.com, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for being here. Great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.